Hi everyone. When you are running multiple regression analysis in the SPSS, one of the pieces of information that you may obtain in your output are uh, zero order partial and part correlations. So what I wanted to do in this presentation is to demonstrate how to obtain those and then also provide a little bit of a context to help you better understand what these are actually referring to. So before we get started, let me note that underneath the video description you will find a link to a PowerPoint that really provides a lot more detail and conceptual information than I'm going to be covering in this video. So be sure to download that PowerPoint to get a deeper dive on these topics. Additionally, you will find a link to an SPSS file that I'm going to use to generate the outputs throughout this video. So you can download that data file to follow along. So let's go ahead and begin. So here we've got the SPSS data opened up in SP, uh, the uh, data opened up in SPSS, and you can see that um, we have uh, basically fictional data from a set of students. We've got um, our dependent variable and our regression model is going to be this uh, achievement variable, and then we're actually going to be using two independent variables, mastery goals and interest. So really briefly, let's run a regression analysis and generate the zero order part and partial correlation so you can see what it looks like. So we're going to go through Analyze, Regression, we'll click on Linear, and um, I'll just kind of reset this. We'll move the Achievement variable to the Dependent box, Mastery and Interest to the Independence box. When we select uh, Statistics, we can click on Part and Partial Correlations. And so when we run our analysis, we'll click continue and then on OK, you can see in our uh, coefficients table, we've got correlations and you'll see it says zero order partial and part correlations. So the zero order correlations are basically the Pearson's correlation between each of our independent variables and the dependent variable. So the correlation between mastery goals and achievement is 0.575. The correlation between interest and achievement is 0.534. And these are the same correlations I would obtain if I go through uh, the analyze correlate bivariate route right here. So just to show you, we'll click through that and we'll move the uh, achievement variable over to the variables box along with the mastery variable and interest variable and we'll click on OK and you can see we have the exact same values. So you can see right here the mastery goal uh, correlation 0.575 which is given right here. Um, you can see that we also have our significance test that's provided. So there's our p-value right there. You can see it's statistically significant. And then with uh, the interest variable and achievement you can see that correlation is 0.534 and you can see that it is statistically significant as well. So if we use a Venn diagram, uh, you can see right here that basically if we have uh, the circle for mastery goals and the circle for achievement, the Pearson's correlation is going to reflect the overlap between those two circles. And the same would be true if we were looking at the relationship between interest and achievement. Now the partial correlation that is provided in our table of uh, regression results represent the relationship between the independent variable and the dependent variable while partialing the other independent variable from that relationship. And the partialing process basically takes place in the following way. If we have uh, independent variable X and independent variable, we'll just uh, call it Z right here, and our dependent variable Y, basically what's occurring is that we are residualizing our variable X. Basically if we regressed variable X onto our variable Z and obtained the uh, residuals, then what we would have with the residuals are scores on X controlling for uh, our variable Z. And the same would go if we are residualizing variable Y with variable Z. So basically what's left over uh, in terms of the residuals are scores on Y uh, controlling for variable Z. So the actual partial correlation then represents the correlation between these two variables right here and, um, and that's controlling for variable Z. 
So using our mastery goal variable as our independent variable, you can see right here again that we have mastery and achievement. This is basically the Pearson's correlation that's reflected right here. The partial correlation is reflected in this area right here after we've controlled for the interest variable from both mastery and achievement. So going back to our regression table with our partial correlations right here, the partial correlation between mastery goals and achievement after controlling for the interest variable is 0.373 and then the partial correlation between interest and achievement after controlling for the mastery goals variable is 0.285 and we can obtain this and uh, demonstrate it by going through analyze correlate and then if we go down to partial right here we can request those exact same partial correlations. So let's start off with mastery goals and achievement. We'll move those to the variables box and then we'll move the uh, interest variable to the controlling for box. So this is the variable that we are controlling for. When we click on OK you'll see that the partial correlation between those two variables is 0.373 and um, which is exactly the same as what we had in our table. If we ask for, if we go back to partial correlation, in this case, let's move interest up here and we'll move mastery down, controlling for, click on OK, you can see our partial correlation is 0.285, which again is exactly what you see in our table. And if you would like uh, proof that um, the partial correlation is the correlation between um, our independent variable or a given independent variable and the dependent variable after residualizing both of those variables for the other independent variable we can do that as well so I'll show you how you can do that if you go to analyze regression linear and what we'll do is we'll reset this I'm going to move the mastery variable to the dependent box first and interest will go to the independent box We'll click on save right here and we will save the unstandardized residuals. So we'll click on continue and then on OK and you'll see in our data set we now have uh, a residualized variable that's uh, basically our mastery variable residualized for the interest variable and then we'll do the same thing by taking uh, mastery out and we'll put the achieve variable in and we'll again under save we're going to leave this set as unstandardized so we'll click on OK right here and we'll we will now have that variable appear in our data set so now when I correlate those two variables what we will find actually let me get out of here go back to our bivariate correlation and I'm just going to go ahead and reset this and I'll move mastery over to the variables box right here that excuse me wrong one <laughs> our uh, residualized mastery variable to the variables box and then our uh, residualized achievement variable over as well when we click on OK you can see that our uh, correlation between those two variables is 0.373 which is exactly the same thing that we saw up above here in our table where we had the partial correlation of 0.373 and if we wanted to do the same thing for the interest variable to get the partial correlation we would have to treat mastery goals in those uh, those models where we are residualizing the interest variable and um, the achievement variables we'd be treating mastery as the independent variable and interest as the dependent variable in one and achieve and achievement as the dependent variable in the other so then if we run that uh, partial correlation we would end up with the 0.285 that you see in this table now the part correlation that we obtain in our output basically reflects the association between our two variables x and y after controlling for variable z from one of the two variables and basically what we're doing is we're controlling it from um, the independent variable mastery in this particular case so we're basically residualizing the mastery variable for the interest variable so we're controlling uh, interest out of the variation in mastery and then taking that residualized uh, mastery variable and correlating it with the achievement variable so the Pearson's R uh, between the residualized mastery variable and the achievement variable is what's referred to as a part correlation um, it's also referred to as the semi partial correlation so in the output uh, it's listed as part correlation but the other term for it is semi partial correlation 
Now the reason why semi-partial correlation can be uh, particularly useful is is that it reflects the unique association between a given independent variable and the dependent variable. So you'll see right here I've got my Venn diagram with mastery, interest, and achievement that's shown. And so you can see the darker uh, achievement um, oval right here, uh, it's broken out into three sections. There's section A, uh, C, and B right here. And so A, uh, in this area right here, uh, this reflects the unique association between the mastery variable and uh, achievement. So in other words, that's the variation that's uniquely accounted for in achievement by the mastery variable. And that's what is reflected by the semi-partial correlation right here. And in fact, if you square that semi-partial correlation, it will get you the proportion of variation in achievement uniquely accounted for by the mastery variable. You'll see that for the second semi-partial correlation right here, for the interest variable, that is what is reflected by this area B right here. So if you squared that, that would be the unique variation or the proportion of unique variation in achievement that's accounted for by uh, the interest variable. Now this area C right here is sort of a no man's land. And um, in fact, if you were to take the uh, proportions uh, reflected in areas A, B, and C and add them all together, they would sum up to the total R square for the model. And if you recall, the R square value is the ref reflecting the proportion of variation in the dependent variable accounted for by the set of predictor variables. So if I take area A and B, uh, sum them up, and then subtract those from the total R square for the model, I would get the proportion of variation and achievement accounted for by the, that joint overlap reflected in area C. Now to prove my point about the fact that uh, the part or basically the semi-partial correlation um, is reflecting the co correlation between the residualized mastery variable and our uh, dependent variable, I'm going to uh, run a bivariate correlation between the residuals for the mastery variable and the dependent variable achievement. So what we'll do is we'll go to analyze, correlate, bivariate right here. I'll just go ahead and reset this and I'm going to move our unstandardized residuals for the mastery variable over uh, and then we'll move the achievement variable over to the variables box as well and when we click on OK you can see it says 0.315 in our table that's given right here and again that 0.315 if we scroll all the way back up uh, to where we were before you can see that it is our um, our part correlation or basically semi-partial correlation that's given in this table. Okay, so that uh, pretty well concludes this demonstration and uh, thanks for watching.